Uh, are you sitting comfortably? Then uh, my next guest is going to begin. <laughs> He's the rising comedian who's already achieved at uh, 25 what most of us can only look forward to. <laughs> In the distant future, middle age, will you please welcome Mr. Jeremy Hardy? <laughs> Well, thank you very much. My name is Jeremy Hardy, and this being live, Channel 4, late-night television, I'm going to talk to you about sex. Now, I know there are going to be a lot of people complaining in the video box about this, but we won't be able to see what they're doing with their hands, will we? <laughs> I used to do a lot of casual sex. I did it in a safari suit, actually. <laughs> That's not actually true. I've never had much of a sex life. I've always had lots of very close friends who don't think about me in that way, and I think that's very supportive of them, really. <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> I met somebody a couple of years ago. We became close. We're still very, very close friends, but for a while there was a bubbling under passion. There was a tension there, but there was no sex because she felt it would spoil things. Spoil her sex life, I suppose. <laughs> she said she just wanted to be like a sister to me. It's like she breaks things and then blames me for it. <laughs> I told her that I used to have baths with my sisters, but she wasn't impressed by that. <laughs> I've always been very unlucky in love. When I was 21, I caught a platonically transmitted disease. <laughs> I landed a fever from sucking somebody else's security blanket. <laughs> you can also get that walking around barefoot on toilet seats. <laughs> and I did, frankly, I did used to have trouble, difficulty in the sack in bringing another person to the point of orgasm. Because I was always alone. <laughs> I used to worry that people were faking their orgasms in my sexual fantasy. <laughs> On the subject of faking, one bloke said to me, and this is the very macho kind of lover, the sort of man whose idea of foreplay is to drink all the coffee before intercourse. He said... <laughs> He said, Jeremy, I'd know. I'd know if a woman wasn't being honest. I'd know if a woman was speaking in bed. I said, if you want to know if someone's being honest when you're in bed with them, a very good way of knowing whether or not someone's telling the truth, this is body language, is that when people lie, their heartbeat rate increases and they sweat a lot. <laughs> that worried him. <laughs> but people worry too much about sexual technique. I mean, obviously, if someone says, was what all right for me, you're on the wrong track, really. <laughs> I think my idea of someone that's good in bed, really, is just someone who goes to sleep quickly and doesn't take up much room. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you what I, what I really think now. I know I've been upstaged by dawn, but I've got into my stride. I know I've built up a lot of respect amongst you. You're thinking, well, here's someone who's lived. He's been there. He's lived on the edge. So here's what I think <laughs> about sex. I think it's good. It's normal. It's natural. It's healthy. I know we've had setbacks and we must now take precautions, but it's a good thing, whatever your sex or your partner's sex. Do it. It's a wonderful... Sex is a beautiful... But jokes aside, sex is a tremendous, wonderful, marvellous thing. <laughs> it gives you something to think about when you're masturbating, I suppose, doesn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy Hardy. You, uh, you've got a radio show on Radio 4 at the moment, haven't you? Yes, yeah, called Unnatural Acts on Radio 4 late at night, on Saturday nights. And it's very funny, I've it's listened to it. It's extremely funny. So I'll give it a listen. Thanks very much, Jeremy Hardy. Thank you.